This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Five, four, three, two, one. Following program is intended for mature audiences. This is my, my Max Hedrum. And what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever. <laughs> you're listening to the IT in the D show. Gosh, where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Anything but that! No! I used to hang out at the Mogumbo Bar. It was a rough place, the seediest dive on the wharf, populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. It's worse than Detroit. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come! Shut up! I'm f- <laughs> Dig, you IT geeks. <laughs> this is Dre DeMatteo from Sons of Anarchy. You are listening to IT in the D. So what happens when you tap the angry beaver in the bunghole? <laughs> exactly. Come on. Get the hell with this. I'm calling a break. We'll come back to the TV show. Hi, this is Ralph Macho, and you're listening to IT in the D show. Wax on. You know what. So yeah, you have yeah. no boots. No. You have no gloves. No. You have no hat. No. You have no scarf. No. You have no scraper. No. How long have you lived in Michigan? All my life. You, sir, are an idiot. I don't care. What's up, everybody? This is Billy Zapka. Sweep the leg. Listening to IT in the D show. No mercy. I may <laughs> have to wipe the geek off. Hi, this is Martin Cove, uh, John Kreese from the Karate Kid movie. And you're listening to IT in the D. Yes, Sensei! Are we at a break yet? <laughs> Hi, I'm Ernie Hudson, and you're listening to IT in the D. All you nerds out there. Nerds! 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 What is a nerd? I'm a nerd, and uh, I'm pretty proud of it. This is Scott Stein at Big Pump Pump. IT in the D show is your hookup. Holler if you hear me. Yeah, you're in your underwear? I'm in my underwear. Hey, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. I definitely <laughs> want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. Hello, everybody. This is Ming Chen from AMC's Comic Book Men. I'm a techie. I'm a nerd, fellow podcaster. My favorite podcast is IT in the D. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to. Well, especially with the back doors open. It's just too big. <laughs> it's way too big. Really? Should we talk about this? We tag team it. Should I keep going, or should I stop? We just lost our clean tag on iTunes. <laughs> This is Robert Hayes, a tit striker to my mother. When I'm not hanging out at the Magumbo Bar, I'm listening to the IT and the D show. It's worse than Detroit. Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat stick. Hey, folks, this is WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and you're listening to the IT and the D show. Tough guy. Ho! My name is Michael Zapsick from AMC's Comic Book Man. You're listening to IT in the D. Come. So, what would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do. The question is what aren't we going to do? Ludicrous speed, sir. Had you better buckle up. Ah, buckle this. Ludicrous speed. Go. And live from Podcast Detroit, this is the IT in the D Show. It's Monday, December 7th, and this is episode 121. This is Bob the Sales Guy here with Dave the Geek, Nuri. The FNG is on location. Where the heck is he this week? Allegedly business, again. He, you know him. He's I got a business trip. I can't make the show. Who we, knows? I trust nothing of what he <laughs> says to us. Find us online, itandthed.com. Give us a like on the Facebook slash itandthed and follow us on the Twitters slash itandthed. And do us a favor already. If you're on iTunes, leave us a review. Um, I think we just hit 15 million listens to this show, and I think we have six reviews. And to me, unacceptable. Um, do us a favor to mark your calendars. This Thursday, December 10th, is our annual uh, toy drive. We're going to be at Falling Down Brewery in Warren, Michigan on 10 and DeQuinder. We are collecting toys for Operation Kid Equip. And money. And money. You can bring money. We're making sure that kids that aren't going to have a good Christmas have a great Christmas, um, or at least a mildly or, good one. Or whatever they whatever they celebrate, happy that. Happy that. We're going to make Christmas cards. <laughs> 
happy that because it's all we're PC culture. You know, I forgot we're broadcasting we're, live from our safe place. We're, here. we're PC, bro. Right. <laughs> um, and not only that, we're 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 ten days away from Star Wars, man. I know that's next Thursday. I know. I'm not gonna lie. I I dude, you know, I've I've been trying to keep it under wraps, just because like I'm I'm trying to remember the lessons of Episode One. Like I, I remember all the hype. And the build up and how excited I was and when the and when like when that hit and the dark and the screen and the gold and the and the, the TH man, I had a nerdgasm right then and there. And and then well then Jar Jar happened and, and Jake Lloyd happened and, and we all know what happened. And then you bought Jake Lloyd t shirts and I, you bought Jar Jar t shirts. And lit them all on fire. Right. <laughs> and, and burned them in effigy. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to remember that and not get too over the top. But man, like all the trailers and the theories, and I mean, it's sucking me right back in. And I can't, I, 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 I want it to be next Thursday. Well, we'll uh, and it, which is apparently a national holiday. Because by, by the way, there will be no live shows here. When? Next Thursday, because well, every show is like, yeah, I'm not going to be because it's Star Wars. When will then be now? Right. Soon. <laughs> Soon. But hey, I, I'd be remiss if I did not introduce, uh, we have two awesome guests. Segment two, I don't know how we pulled this one off. We're lucky enough to be joined by Leo Barella, who's the CTO of Blue Cross Blue Shield in Michigan. I don't know if somebody has pictures from someone. Well, um, I, we, we kind of, we, we, we bamboozled them a little bit. I mean, you know, we came to our pink slip party with like, you know, a thousand people, so we looked impressive. <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, you don't know us very well. But, Leo, thank you for hanging out with us. We, uh, we look forward to speaking yeah. with you in, in the second segment. Pleasure. And then we got uh, Stephanie here, who we met at uh, uh, Fantasticon, who uh, runs Master Plot Comics. And we're gonna ha- we had fun with you at, at Fantasticon, and we sure segment three will be a blast. And we appreciate you coming down uh, from downriver to hang out with us here uh-huh. in Ferndale. <laughs> so, so, wait, does that mean she came upriver? Upper, yeah. yeah. Is that how that works? I, I came up the river to join you guys. Awesome. Absolutely. Right. That, that's amazing. By gondola. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, it is. So I, I, I'm just going to, I'm going to segue for just a little sec because today is, you know, something of an anniversary for me. Today, you know, so today was, so, you know, t- December 7th is a day that will always, you know, forever live in infamy for, you know, Pearl Harbor and all that stuff. But so December 7th, 1995, so 20 years ago today. It should be like sappy piano music playing right yeah, now. Yeah, no, no. There's, there, there was a shiny, uh, actually I was neither shiny nor happy, but I was a geek uh, living down in D.C. Had gotten like just, br- just broken up, a horrible relationship. I was like the depressed geek. I was binge drinking. I was trying to forget Michelle. I was trying to get through all that stuff. And I hopped on to CompuServe. I, I logged on to CompuServe um, and hopped into the sci-fi fantasy forum um, and found people discussing Star Wars, which brings us right back to the opening. You were a geek. I absolutely <laughs> was. And started talking Star Wars. And properties of Star Wars. And properties of it. It was demented and sad, but social. Uh, which, you know, that and that's what started the chain of events. Like So for those who don't know, uh, you know, so 18 days later, what would rapidly after that become my first wife, um, Wound up driving from here in Michigan down to DC to come visit me because we because you know I logged in I posted messages messages made me laugh yada 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 haha you know chat windows and then phone calls and then three and four hour phone calls and then she just called me on Christmas Day and was like hey this is stupid we get along uh, and I was like oh well where are you she's like I'm in Ohio I was like well don't you live in Michigan she's like yeah I'm on my way to visit you I was like oh that's quaint. So yeah, but so that that's what led to the chain of that started the chain of events that led to me moving out here in Michigan in March of '96, and 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 they say everything happens for a reason. So like it's one of those you know even in the the darkest depths of the bottom of many many Jack Daniels bottles that I was in, there was there was something there that you know even though that didn't work out because you'll notice I said first one. <laughs> <laughs> IT in the DC just doesn't have the same ring to it. I'm sorry. No, it doesn't. Yeah, no. But no. So I mean, it's. It, but yeah, I mean, it, it's funny looking back at you know how much has has evolved and changed over the past 20 years. You know, because that. I mean, CompuServe was the whip back then. I mean, it was dial up BBSs. That was all you had. Um, and, and now here we are running a networking group. You know about websites, and we're going to talk healthcare IT and robots and all kinds of crazy stuff. Back when that was your age, I had a Commodore 64 with a 300-baud modem, and I, I liked, liked it. it. 
<laughs> it was good. You crazy kids today. <laughs> Met a girl on CompuServe in a Star Wars forum. Has that story ever been? That's got to be like like million people met on Match.com. One person met on CompuServe in a that's Star right. Wars I, that's, forum. That, that's, like, my, that's my hipster moment. I did it way before it was cool. <laughs> no, no, you're the only one. It's yeah. not a hipster. <laughs> you're, you're a singularity is what he's trying to say. Because, I mean, let's be real. I mean, it was 1995. So, I mean, it was like that. Like, you couldn't. There was no, like, e- hey, email me a pic. To see what you look, I mean, it was like because I mean, you were you were waiting like thirty seven minutes for a picture to load. You would just see like the top of the head, and it was slowly. And, and, and going then your down. modem would cut out. Yeah, and you you get like the weird. You're like, well, wait, wait, is is she Quasimodo or <laughs> like did I have a rendering issue with it? Yeah. So yeah, but that's so yeah. Twenty years ago today, I, I just that it I was I had an awe moment this it's morning. Like I so. met her at all you can eat pizza day at Joey's. Uh, I'm just trying to think of a bad analogy of like, like no one like I met a girl there like no you, there's a girl there like, you're kidding me um, so something weird happened this week and, and and you know we always talk about when we take our kids to like the little stupid recitals we call them stupid right. but we love them because our kids and when we go to like concerts what do you see in front of you nine times out of ten is someone holding up their GD cell phone um, or iPad. Or iPad taking a movie. They're not, you know, in, in, you know, from one of our shows, Michael Mode, he was talking about on his show. It's like, please just enjoy the moment. Like, why do you have to live you're not. through it? Because you're never going to watch it again. Yeah, like, you're never going to watch it. And so you, you really missed gonna, it. Right, you missed it. But, like, you can, so you can post it on Facebook and say, look where I was at. Is that the only? But Dave Chappelle is setting a standard. I don't know if it's going to backfire on him or not. But what's the thing he's using? The, yonder. He's using yonder, and they're basically a, a, a mini Faraday cage case. I mean, it's and if you want to go to Dave Chappelle's shows, I believe it's uh, Chicago. Yeah. Um, when you get there, uh, before they will let you go to your seats, uh, you have to hand over your cell phone. They will put it in one of these yonder cases and lock it and give it back to you. Um, and then if you want to use your phone, you must come out to the lobby, and they will unlock it for you and give you your phone. I get it, but that, like, number one, that's going to slow things down immensely. And it's going to seriously piss oh, people off. It's going to be worse than line at Ford Field for uh, doing gun checks. Well, because don't get me wrong, like, dude, the last, like, I saw Chappelle live, you know, maybe like eight, nine years ago, you know, before he had the meltdown. Um, and he, dude, don't, like, he was great and all, but he did like a five and a half hour show. And, like, it, like, because he just kept riffing and going and, like, 80% of it wasn't even funny. And like at hour four, you're like, or actually at like hour three, you're like, like Dave, wrap it up. Wrap I heard it up. he won't come to Detroit anymore because the last time he was here, like he got mad. He got everybody, everybody, No, because everybody kept yelling catchphrases and he didn't yeah. want to play the hits. And it's like, well, you can't have it both ways. But here's the thing, like, I, I don't know, when I go to, like, here's the thing, when I go to a concert or, or a sporting event, I like to take one or two pictures, right? Or like a 10-second video clip and then put my phone away and I'm pretty much done. Yeah. And at halftime, I'll pull it out again. Hey, is somebody, is somebody here? Yeah. It's like, you always check in on Facebook and you meet. Like last Pistons game, I was at opening day. I ran into like six friends because I checked in. They checked in. Yeah. Like, hey, what section are you in? And we met up for a beer at halftime. Like that's part of the experience. Yeah. You know? So I'm like, he's kind of taken away, you know, that what should be. I'm not going to sit well, there with my. And I'm not going to sit there with my hand over my head with videotaping the whole damn thing. That's count, you know. That's stupid. Well, Whoever. but it's it's that it's it's not maybe eh, that what should be maybe is the wrong way to look at it. It's it's that which is now. I mean, maybe from Chappelle's point of view, that what sh- which should be is what it used to be, which is you are sitting your ass in the seat and paying attention to what's going on up on stage and you're not, you know, playing Clash of Clans or checking the latest Reddit threads. I paid $120 for a ticket. <laughs> if I want to sit there with my eyes closed and burp, I will do that. Like, I, like you got my money? What is... What he wants me to... It's all about the artistic integrity. Oh, stop. <laughs> he wants me to... Dis- like, so, Bob, tell me that third joke he said in the second hour. Like, I don't know. Like, did I have fun? Yes. Yeah. Um... So here's where it gets interesting and why I, I keep saying, like, I hate the way gaming is going um, because you can't just buy a game. Like, remember the old Nintendo? You plug it in, you play your game, you stop when you're Maybe done. Maybe you got to pull it out and blow on it every now and right, then and put right. it back in. But by and large, yeah. Conspiracy theory is whether or not that was actually effective, but I'll digress. Um, <laughs> but, like, now you have to, like, the whole downloadable content, you got to play online multiplayer, and it just it, it destroys gaming. Yeah. Why did Office 
365. <laughs> Why? Maybe, Leo, if you want to jump in on this, too. Why in the hell does that need to be a cloud app when it was perfectly fine residing on my machine of choice? I mean, Everyone had it. It was ubiquitous. Well, and, and it incre- Well, I mean, it did increasingly take up more and more disk space Quit. with every release. But disk space has gotten cheaper. And my fun for the weekend, I wound up buying a new laptop. It's got a terabyte hard drive in it. And oh, by the way, because I was backing up the old one that the kids spilled coffee on, I got a four terabyte external drive. Well, the reason I bring this up is Office 365 had a huge outage for a long period of time. And well, now, but it was only in the year. It was only in uh, England and the UK. Don't care. So it, 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 went, know, it, it didn't make news here in the U.S. because it was just you know it, just Europe. But it, it can it can happen. <laughs> but no. But the point of the matter is like maybe I don't want to be on them their internets when I'm doing my Word doc. What if I'm on an airplane, right? And I want to do work. I can't now unless I have to buy the thirty dollar Delta Go, you know, wireless. Right. Yeah. And that never works. No. But again, why does there were the native apps that were, you know, and it started with, you know, Salesforce and Gmail. They started being like, that was like the origination of the cloud app. But to me, it's it's getting dumb. Like, why does Adobe, did they really, I, I know they wanted to go to a annuity subscription model, right, and get money, more money. But did they really need to? Photoshop doesn't need to be sitting in the cloud. No. So, uh, okay, now with this in mind, and I just want to put it back into a personal context for you. Oh, boy. So this brings us right back to the conversation we were having about like three hours ago. Oh, boy. Uh, when you were saying, hey, it'd be really great if there was like, you know, if the PCs in the studios had terminal services. Yeah. So that instead of standing up and walking the four feet right. from the engineer studio. Right. They, they they would have, be able to terminal in. Yeah, that's how dumb that is. Yes. Okay. So that that that's yeah. I mean, no, that's that, fine. <laughs> it goes back to my Amazon thing. Do I? I don't want to drive to Meyer. I want it delivered to me. Right. Right. So the same thing. I don't want to walk over four feet into the other studio. I want a terminal server in <laughs> to this one. Right. And why do I have to get up? Like, had an interest. Actually, speaking of that, just a sidebar. I had an interesting conversation with people today about Uber and the potential threat. That they that they exist as now for traditional delivery systems. So you know, like Microsoft partnered up with them for the Madden launch. Sure. And you know, they had fleets of Ubers everywhere, um, and you could get a launch day delivery of the Madden game when it came out via their partnership with Uber. So I mean, that's like okay. So you know, the post office is already taking hits left and right. You know, you've got, you know... But see, I thought the post office, like, everybody said they was taking hits, but I thought, like, they were complaining because, like, email is going to get rid of traditional mail, right? But they didn't think of shipping packaging. I, I don't th- I don't think the revenues of the USPS have gone down. Maybe I'm wrong. Eh, they have. Okay, I mean, if you, I mean, if you look at their models, because, I mean, the, I mean, the post service, postal service was always supposed to be a for-profit entity. No. Um, and Randy just corrected me on Twitter, you can work on Office 365 offline. So <laughs> smack my hand for being a dupe again. Well, what, else, what else is new, right? So, and, so end of topic then? End of topic, yeah. <laughs> I can't complain about it anymore. <laughs> uh, so, I, you know, and this is a, uh, just speaking of online, uh, so this is a, uh, a fascinating topic to, that, I, that I was really wanting to bring up. So Clementine Ford, um, very, very big on Facebook, Twitter, a few other platforms um, in, the, in the pro-feminist movement. And her Facebook page, unfortunately, is typically the most Isley Cantina. Um, when it comes to the comment section where, you know, you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy that are chiming in on this nonsense. Worse than free press comment? And, comment? Dude, worse than Reddit. In oh, my cases. God. That's um, a problem. And so she decided to up the ante. Um, and a guy was particularly vile um, on one of her posts. And so she went to the guy's profile, saw where he worked, took screenshots of everything he wrote, and sent it to his place of employment. Um, he no longer has a job. Wow. I kind of want to hug her right now. So, I feel like that is so amazing. Well, and so, like, that's the funny part. So, like, and so, like, you know, and she got, like, she got this uh, email uh, from the hotel chain that the guy worked at um, and was like, you know what? Thank you for bringing this to our attention. No, that doesn't represent our values. No, 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 no. He no longer works here. And please post this for all of your followers to see. And so she did, which then led to an even more wretched hive of scum and villainy coming out of the work woodwork with the, oh, well, you know, now you just cost the guy his job and no, 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 and you evil woman. Well, no, he cost 
him his job. Yeah, he, he started that chain of events. Let's, yeah, let's be perfectly clear. Behind his computer and said, oh, I can say whatever I and want, and I have no consequences. Yes, actions have consequences just because you're hiding in your little, you know, hobbit hole. <laughs> or mom's basement, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Hobbit <laughs> hole, mom's basement, you know. No, but if you read free press comments, <clears throat> everything's fine when you have, like, the normal name with the profile picture. Get the get the pseudonym, and you know it's a pseudonym because it has a picture of whatever, and it's like <laughs> just God rotten. It's like what are you like, you know? What are you getting out of this? Like, and especially, and that's just generic topics about generic things. Like this is like directed. I read some of the things people were writing about her. It's brutal. Dude, it's cr- it was. It, it, it is. I mean, it, it's one of those things that make you realize that freedom of speech is not always necessarily a good thing. Um, especially when it comes to, you know, the keyboard commandos and, you know, the internet courage and all that nonsense because I, I do think more stuff like this should happen. I mean, and this is one of the, you know, we've, we've you know, joked about some of the stuff that's happened in the past. Like, you know, the uh, I think it was like six months ago, girl got a job, um, posted on Twitter about ha ha, I bs my way through the entire interview, da, 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 da. didn't realize company was already following her, job offer got rescinded before she ever started. So, I mean, it, like stuff like people need to understand that what you post online can absolutely ripple effect into your offline life. Look what happened with yeah. you. You wrote a blog for here, and it got reposted, and then they dug you up on LinkedIn and posted where you work. Yeah, all because I wanted people to get involved and help each other. What an ass I was. You're the worst. <laughs> but what I'm saying, unless you're completely off the grid, they're going to find you. So if you write something that, you know, and I remember we talked about this a while ago. Like, I want to walk around Detroit one day and go to all the coffee houses with a Detroit Republican T-shirt. Not because I'm a Republican, because I want to see how many people just downright will hate me for a T-shirt, which to me is, like, again, the most ridiculous. Like, again, if you don't agree with her on her views, great. Like, don't read her page. Like, you know, I really disagree with you. Or, yeah, yeah. Or don't read. You can have but, like, of course without being yeah. vile. But I don't have to hate you. But can you, you know? on the Internet? Like, I, <laughs> I, I've seen it happen. Very rarely, but yes, it can happen. Yeah, I'd love to I see that faith. on Reddit. While I understand your point of view, I just slightly disagree. <laughs> Let's be friends. Like, no, I, I, I probably don't, not. I don't believe we're going to reach consensus on this, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we table this and move on to another topic? Right. Right. <laughs> you know, it would be nice, but but no, it, it's the internet. Well, I'm sure Donald Trump is a charming man, but <laughs> however, his fiscal plans don't seem to match up with. <laughs> Yeah, and that would suck at that. Like, oh, let's be honest. No, but you know, I'll be honest. Good for her. Pat on the back. High five. Internet. However you want to do it. Like again, like death threats. Like really, really, because because you don't agree with somebody's like convictions and beliefs. Like because that was always. I remember when uh, message forms back before. Like you'd post something. You're like, dude, just die already. Like that's a normal. Yeah, just kill yourself. That's a normal. That, yeah, that was like comment. the knee jerk reaction on message boards from like the dog. Oh time. yeah. You know, and now, like, Reddit, like, well, if you do that, it's a death threat. And, you know, you can't do that. It's, it hurts people's feelings, which I, which, you know, <sighs> the damn Internet. The, the, the Internet's a dirty place. You know, you just have to try well, not to look I, at all of that stuff and I think the Internet forward. is truly in, like, it's cranky, confused, like, adolescent teen years right now. Like it, like it, it, it doesn't know what it wants to be when it grows up. Um, it's got a lot of people pulling it in a lot of different directions. <laughs> Can't really make up its own mind. Um, and there's just a lot of new experiences out there that can be confusing. <laughs> you know what I just discovered? That's a really good analogy, actually. Pardon my naivety, and I'll get probably trashed on Twitter for being so stupid. But like, a or paid, here in the room, whatever. Right, whatever. <laughs> but like, I just realized, like, I just found out what a paid internet show was. Like I don't, I didn't realize yeah. companies and like political pundits and whatnot will pay people to sit in a room for ten hours to sway to go public, on Reddit to yeah and, and try to sway public opinion. Like I just thought these were neckbeards in in you know liberal colleges. No, these are people getting paid by like the Hillary Clinton Foundation or whoever you know yeah. Trump or whoever pick your politician. Yeah, they and, all have them right, or it could be like a company because we'll like. Um, the subreddit conspiracy subreddit always does it like watch as like this company will come to a defense like and it's so yeah. articulated like almost like a PR person wrote it right and you know like oh yeah then some guy comes out and says yeah I was getting paid 12 bucks an hour to to follow around and write this stuff and like <laughs> wait that exists 
<laughs> like, what? My bubble's been shattered. Although there's an article that just came out now in Wired about propaganda bots. Uh-huh. Like, not just... Which, which again, brings us right back to... The South Park people are geniuses. Yeah, no, they're yeah, it's the, <laughs> yeah, they're they following. Are. Have you been watching this season? Um, I have. I've watched a couple episodes. I I don't watch a lot of TV. Okay, I'm busy, so the, but go back and watch because this season is directly following the arc of Detroit. It really? is absolutely. If I didn't know better, I'd swear those guys were living here. It started with the Whole Foods being moved into Midtown. Like the, then they're going I, through. Gentr- I saw that. Then the town had a bad reputation, and the Whole Foods will save us. So the Whole Foods moved in. Then you know the 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 new condos come, and the new and the, but the, they kept the crappy houses so for like so they wouldn't purely gentrify the area, right? right? And then well, and then and then they're bringing in the stuff about ads and how ads are getting like first there was you know ads on TV and well but then we learned about you know and then cable TV came along and you were supposed to be able to you paid for cable TV to not have ads but then ads made it there anyway. And then, then along came the, and then, you know, P- humankind invented the TiVo, which, you know, let you get past ads. Then the internet and pop-ups. And, that, 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 that. and it's all about how, you know, the evolution of the ad and how the ad's getting smarter and smarter. And now in the latest episodes, the ads, an ad has taken human form. And, and it's trying to, but it's, but it, but it, so it's, and then, and now South Park, because of the Whole Foods and all the other stuff, the series, the, the folks on this, you know, the folks, the characters um, are now uh, thinking about moving out because it's getting too expensive to live there. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it makes a lot of sense. So, one of the comments that I had done uh, on the topic of, of the of the internet before, you know, obviously I'm I'm Italian, right? Uh, and, no, uh, no, <laughs> I'm faking it. Really, I figured I figured I'm Georgia. <laughs> No, but um, but uh, actually, um, the use of social uh, in Italy, um, I think, actually found an application in politics where um, using the social network, uh, people were actually able to elect uh, individuals to actually be part of the parliament. Uh, and then uh, whomever is part of this party can actually be in the parliament and actually vote basically live via Twitter. So basically, these people are basically just representative of this uh, social politi- pol- politics party. But... Mm-hmm. People like you and I can actually just e- express their vote via Twitter live, you know, on the government, and so basically this representative just vote whatever the the Twitter. Oh, that sounds is. like the worst idea ever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <"Hell on earth." laughs> yeah. But, but, but imagine that, right? So, so now all of a sudden you actually have real time control of uh, a, an army of people that basically are on Twitter, and 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 using these individuals as part of the parliament to actually express their opinion, right? So it's a uh, Wow. Which, which again, it, it kind of defeats and regulates the entire government structure, right? Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Well, the, the, the Wired article goes on with the propaganda bots that it's, yeah. it's automated then. It'll take – Wait, and you can buy them for like five bucks a day. <laughs> right, and it'll formulate opinions based upon – like it'll word, do word uh, association, um, thought or whatever, whatever, yeah. like, you know, put the you – know, and then compl- – like go against or go for. Yeah, or, it does. It, it does. It, it does a word. You know, a, like a word pattern analysis, and says, right. "Okay, this is what." And do you want me to be for or against this? And you pay it. You whoever runs them, you pay them like five bucks a day, and they unleash their bots wherever you tell them to unleash them to to go argue for or against whatever. Yeah. I, I bet you I've had arguments with them at least thirty times the past <laughs> six months. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, um, but Dave, I, I heard you're gonna quit your job. I mean, I'm not. It's tempting. It's I this like this the greatest is, job wreck in the history of Detroit. Taking a lot of self control. Um, it is uh, the new Legoland that's opening up. Uh, it, they they want a master builder. Ooh, wow. like that's like that's the title master. But and so you get paid. To be. play with Legos. <laughs> that's that's All living day. the dream right there. I'm telling you. <laughs> that's like my, that's my daughter's dream. <laughs> <laughs> I just want those slippers so I don't step on them. Because I swear to God, I, I stepped on those. one last week and I thought I got shot with a 50 cal in my foot. I was in pain. Like I, that, I can't exper- I can't articulate the, the pain that I felt. I've been there. Oh, there was nothing. Yeah. Worse, there's nothing worse than a Lego to the arch of the foot. No, that's, I got. I got it right in the spot. And I'm like, I'm screaming, and I, I have a pretty good pain tolerance. I was like, what the hell are you yelling? Like Lego. <laughs> 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 But like, have you? Like, seen, like, did you fall and break your leg? No, no. But have, have you seen some of the stuff those those guys can, and gals can build? Oh, it's like, crazy! Like the, the Ford Explorer to scale. Like, if you ever go to Chicago on, on the Magnificent Mile, they yep. have a uh, like. Oh, here's the John Hancock Tower. Like, 
30 foot tall. We're like, what? Well, so, I mean, like, well, you can. I mean, like, so you can go buy, you know, Legos by the pound. You know, just, you know, the assorted sets and all that kind of stuff. That place that's up at... Uh, Macomb, yeah, yeah. 23 in Mound, I think it is, or 23 in Hayes. Um, you know, they bulk purchase Legos. And, then, like, and I didn't realize this until I was looking into the story. They, they publish books where, like, and it's these master builders that, you know, they get together and they're like, here's all the wacky, crazy stuff I've built, and here's how you can build it, too. Dude, if you told me, Bob, I'll give you $1,500 right now if you finish the Millennium Falcon by next week. <laughs> I'll say, I'll be like, no. I'll, I'll, yeah. Or I'll go on Craigslist and have somebody else do it for me. I'll, I'll give him 500 I can't, I can't do it. I have to, like, you're a better man than me. I have. I don't have the patience. I don't have the yeah. the wherewithal. Like, I'll put four blocks together and go, I'm done. Tell what I'm, else? Like, or a, ADHD, oh, no, whatever. See, I'm, like, I'm, yeah, the, the kids and I all sit there and, like, just build stuff forever. I'm not sure what's more insane to kind of, you know, build this gigantic structure with Lego or documenting how to build it. <laughs> That's the because well, right? yeah, we all know how much uh, IT, we all know how much documentation <laughs> oh, yeah. sucks. Can you, you know, can you imagine documenting yeah, yeah. the building of a Lego? Yeah. yeah. But, hey, we are going to jump up against a quick break. We're going to be back. Leo Barella, the CTO of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan, should be a great conversation. This is the IT in the D show, and uh, we'll be right back. IT in the D. Read. Meet. Listen. Networking Detroit, one beer at a time. Hey, this is John Schneider from Nip Tuck Smallville, the haves and the have-nots. So, oh, Dr. Quinn, hot in Cleveland, secret lives of the American teenager, and just about everything you can possibly imagine. And, oh, yeah, the Dukes of Hazard. You're listening to Bob and Dave. See IT in the D show. IT in the D.com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Welcome back, segment two, live from Podcast Detroit. This is the IT in the D show. We're sitting here in beautiful Ferndale, Michigan. This is Bob the Sales Guy, always here with Dave the Geek. Nuri, the FNG, said he's in Cambodia on Twitter. I don't know if I believe that or not. Um, for yeah, all you know, by that one. He probably is, though. Uh, hey, do us a favor. Find us online, itnd.com. Give us a like on the Facebook Give us a follow on the Twitter, slash ITMD. And like I said, if you're on iTunes, do us a favor. Leave us a review. It would be greatly appreciated because we have like seven. And that's um, <laughs> I don't get it. Um, mark down your calendars. Thursday, December 10th, we're going to be at Falling Down Brewery. That's this Thursday. This. Not, th- not just the 10th. It's this Thursday. Um, Falling Down Brewery, 10 into Quinder, um, Operation Kid Equip, Toy Drive, 100% of the proceeds are going to charity. And they're a 501c3, so everything is tax deductible. And we're not the middleman. It's all going directly no, they'll to be him. there. Right? <laughs> Just like last year, um, we're collecting toys, collecting dollars. Um, if you got any, it uh, doesn't matter. Just trying to give some kids a good Christmas. Well, and we'll have, we're going to have Kevin Wilson there, a good you know, musician. He does a great uh, acoustic guitar 80 set. That'll be phenomenal. Uh, I'm sure we'll have trinkets, trash, giveaways, all kinds of fun stuff going on. So, yeah. Speaking of Christmas, um, holiday season's here. I can't believe it. Like, knowing that I, I had to put in my PTO request for the holidays has given me the, the ticks. Um, I, <laughs> and, and now I know, now I got to figure out what I'm going to buy everyone. Um, if now we got secret Santas, we have to do stuff for work. Um, you know, do us a favor. We we just got the holiday kits from Harry's, and they are phenomenal. Go to Harry's dot com h a r y s. Check out their shaving sets. They have a great gift box. Dave and I just got one with a copper razor, uh, some face wash, some some razors. Um, I I had to go buy another one because my wife stole that one. From they're them. nice. <laughs> I mean, it's, and this is what, like, again, I mean, this is one of those things where, like, this is not BS. This is not ad speak. Like, seriously, like, the, the, these, this is a product that we use, um, and they're for their, their for the quality. They're ridiculously cheap. Um, I've bought them for the brothers in law. I bought them for friends. I've bought. It's a great product. The travel kit, like I traveled with the travel kit for the first time when I went to Dallas last week. It was it was money. Um, Literally, it feels like Loot Crate when this thing showed up. Like, I didn't want to throw away the box it came in. Because it was, sing- it was, it's like the, the Shinola box, right, that I got. Yeah. Right. It's like, I actually kept that. And it's like, I wanted to keep this. Um, but if you have any uh, gifts, Secret Santas, like, you might think giving a shaving kit away is, is kind of goofy. But they'll I mean, thank you. The, the, trust me, they'll thank you. Um, <laughs> The the starter kits are starting at fifteen bucks. If you use coupon code, I'm sorry, discount code, 
<laughs> IT. There's, there's still no Q in that word. IT in the D five. That's IT in the D lowercase. The number five. You'll get five bucks off. Free shipping. If you order before December 10th, you're getting free shipping. If you order before December 18th, so if you miss the 10th and you order the week after, you're going to get economy shipping, but you'll still get it for Christmas. Nice. So harrys.com, H-A-R-Y-S, discount code IT in the D, the number 5.com. They got some phenomenal uh, gift packs. Um, and you trust me, you won't be disappointed. It's a, it's a phenomenal product. I had a, I don't know if I should say this or not. I had a uh, nice little chat with one of the founders on Friday. Um, <laughs> I thought I was going to be in trouble. And he was going to yell at me, but we had a nice conversation. He thanked us for our partnership. So that was, uh, that was, that was very cool. And uh, they're a great company. And yeah. um, without further ado, like I said, we, I don't know how we how we swindled this one or pulled this one off. Um, I don't think he knew what he was getting into. But we have uh, live in studio, Leo Barella. The CTO of uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield in Michigan. Uh, really appreciate you coming and spending some time with us. I love being here. Good, good. You guys are great. <laughs> Thank oh, you. And by the way, just based on these razors that you actually you guys bought, you know, you, you look great. You know, <laughs> your, your, your shave is like perfect. I missed, <laughs> I missed this part on my chin, but everything else, <laughs> yeah. everything else looks good. Yeah. So, Leo, I mean, so you, uh, there's obviously so much going on uh, in, in the world of IT and healthcare right now. So, the CTO of Blue Cross Blue Shield, I mean, you've got to be thinking of a million different things. So, I mean, like, what is – what's going on now? Like, what what do you see is going on now in the world of healthcare IT? And, and what's kind of on the horizon that people like us aren't thinking about yet? Well, so um, healthcare in general is a, is a growing uh, market. Um, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, the investment that uh, the people are making in healthcare – is unparalleled, uh, you know, in history, and uh, people start to realize that uh, uh, as the cost of healthcare is going up, uh, then uh, technology uh, needs to be uh, deployed uh, to be able to actually maintain the cost of healthcare down. So right. you, you actually see that there are a variety of different companies. Well, then, that are, wow, do we need a whole lot more technology? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. you know, and technology is everywhere. Right? So th- there is not one market that is not being touched by technology, and. Uh, uh, especially for, uh, you know, electronics in general uh, are becoming uh, more and more part of the healthcare system um, uh, as you actually start to miniaturize um, devices that were only available in the doctor's office and now they're available in your own home. Right. People start to actually, again, go to the store, you go to, to, to and I, I cannot mention any, any brand names, but right. if you go to an electronic store, you can actually buy now devices that, again, uh, you, you want set to go to a doctor's office in right. order to actually take care of yourself. Uh, and so that, that there are a ton of devices that you can uh, buy for, for less than $50 that can give you like an accurate reading on some of your health conditions. You know, right? well, I mean, but not only that, I mean, it, it, it's just from a, a personal experience story, uh, well, not per- close enough to personal. Um, so my wife was ridiculously sick uh, like at like yeah. the end of last week. And, you know, I was at the office, couldn't get home. Uh, she didn't feel like it was a good idea for her to be driving. Um, her main doctor's office was closed. So she called up and was like, hey, so doctor's office is closed. I, I told her, like, catch an Uber or something. Yeah. She's like, so what am I supposed to do now? And they said, well, we do have this app, Absolutely. Um, you know, where you could, you, could ha- you could get a virtual doctor visit. Yeah. And it, it, it's, so, like, she installed this app. Logged in, uh, it essentially Skype or yep. WebEx, yeah, right. um, and had a virtual doctor's visit. And they had her, you know, like open up and say ah with the th- you know camera pointer down her throat, and you know had you know and, and really? had her had her feel here and like so you know is it worse or better when you do this? Um, and at the end of it, wrote her a script that I picked up on the way home, and ta-da, she didn't have to go to the doctor, and it was standard copay. That's correct. That's, That's phenomenal. Amazing. Yeah, and, and that is actually what uh, again mobile is actually now doing to to any industry um, where people don't want to move to whatever the service is, but they can actually access the service from their right. phone. Right. So Amazon, of course, is uh, you know the, the the beginning of uh, of that phenomena where right. basically people don't go to stores, or if you do go to the store, you go to the store to kind of you know see what you're gonna then eventually buy on. Right. Amazon, <laughs> uh, but so is for so is for healthcare and. Uh, if you're actually looking at how social uh, is allowing people to actually score uh, services, right? So now I actually go to the restaurant, I give the restaurant five stars, I invite my friends that basically had a great experience. You can imagine that that is actually going to transform also how people will access eventually virtual services like the one that your wife has access. Right. right? 
Uh, you might not actually get the same doctor, but the service is actually measured in ways that where, where the quality is going to be maintained, uh, you know, fairly high. Right. Uh, and again, you can now actually access the doctor anywhere you are, anytime you want. Oh yeah, and it's it's a twenty four. Apparently, it's a twenty four seven service. It's and it is. It's global. I mean, you know, it, it may not even be. A, it might not have even been a doctor in Michigan that you talked to. Yeah, and, but, quite, fr- and quite frankly, uh, even uh, even a Blue Cross, right? Um, Many people, especially the people with young children, right, don't know exactly, you know, what to do if you're actually in a moment of crisis. And so most people actually go and go to the ER. Right. Uh, and now the ER is very expensive, both for, for, for the person that is actually taking people to the ER and also for, uh, you know, the, your, your insurance company. And right. So, uh, it's much better now to actually have access to a doctor right away in the palm of your hands that can actually see your, your, your child you know, screaming or whatever they're, they're actually doing. And they can actually start making recommendations that are more, you know, home remedies per se. And then if the thing's actually progressing, then basically you might actually be advised to actually go to like an urgent, urgent care facility right. instead of actually having to go to the ER. Well, I'm or, sure they'd rather have that than have, you know, Anita's of the world going on WebMD and going, oh, I must have. Oh, my God, I have Ebola. Right. <laughs> And then rush yeah. into ER well, and say, well, I have Ebola. Well, not only that, but, I mean, I, you know, I can see where, I mean, I, I, I'm sure you went through this, you know, just like, you know, so especially with the first kid. But the, by the time you get the second kid, you're not as paranoid. But, like, you know, the first kid, every sniffle, every sneeze, every whatever, you're, you know, you're paranoid. Exactly. And there are a lot of unnecessary trips to the doctor. So, I mean, if it, it, just solving that. That's, would that's be right. incredible from a, hey, I'd love to go to the doctor's office, and when they tell me my appointment's at 11.15, it's actually at 11.15. Right. Because there's not a backlog of other stuff going on. <laughs> yeah, and then, uh, you know, again, going back to devices, uh, most of the devices that you actually buy do come with some sort of an analytic service, right, where basically the device itself is actually recommending you something to do. Uh, like uh, if you actually are getting like a sleep monitor, uh, and I don't know how many of you actually are using sleep monitors, but basically sleep monitors do tell you when it's actually the best time for you to actually go to bed. They understand exactly, you know, what you do when, when you're actually asleep, which, again, you, you're completely unconscious. But then it actually gives you a recommendation as to what to change so that you can actually have a better sleep. Now, again, it is well, I proven. I totally need that. <laughs> yeah, no, I do, too, because I just, I just never sleep. So, <laughs> yeah, so basically, w- when you actually start, uh, you know, listening to the recommendation of, of the analytics tool that is actually just look, looking at, at your own uh, sleep yeah. pattern, right? And there are also uh, other type of devices, such as uh, EKG devices. Uh, right. So... How much do you think an EKG device can cost? You know, oh, you uh, think tens of thousands of dollars? Exactly. Yeah. So for seventy nine dollars now, you can actually have your own in your pocket, and if you actually experience any sort of heart, yeah, if heart condition, right, then now you can actually measure yourself um, anytime you want, uh, and then there is actually an analytic script that, that basically tells you if you're okay or if you should actually go consult your physician. So this kind of opens up a whole new uh, set of services for for uh, healthcare. Uh, in healthcare IT, uh, because uh, the more sampling uh, you can actually get from these devices, the more, as you know, through machine learning and uh, you know, in other type of technologies, um, computers will actually become a lot more accurate in uh, in, in basically. Well, yeah, the bigger the data sample, the better. Yeah, correct. And so there are basically computers now that that even actually looking at a rash, like you know, Google is actually now starting to to do analytics on uh, on images of of rashes, right? where you can actually look at a rash uh, and Google can actually predict the type of, of bacteria that basically is infecting your skin, right? So Google's uh, becoming self-aware. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Google's like this close to being scared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but to say that, uh, you know, in, in the field of medicine, uh, while before you were relying on the experience and uh, the, the intuition of, and the education of your, do- you know, of your doctor, right. now, just based on imaging, Computers can be a lot faster and a lot more precise in the diagnosis of an EKG or the diagnosis of uh, of a you know uh, PET scan or you know or any sort of imaging uh, type of uh, results. So the que- the question I come I, I come to then is is the same one we always have about self driving cars and all that kind of stuff. So you know w- with great power comes great responsibility and and also liability. Mm-hmm. Y- you know so I mean like what. What goes in? I mean, is is like how big of a concern is that? Like, oh, well, the, you know, yeah, that little seventy nine ninety nine EKG machine said I was fine, and then I dropped. You know, I, I had a coronary two hours later. I'm calling Sam Bernstein yeah. and getting the Bernstein advantage, and someone's getting sued. 
Yeah, of course they know. That there's, there's, there's plenty of disclaimers. Yeah, uh, that goes <laughs> actually in the the devices, of course. Uh, and, and then, and then again, uh, you know, at, at the end, it's it's kind of really up to you to to kind of really either trust the algorithm and, uh, right. and the analytics, and or go trust your doctor, right? So. Uh, of course, you know, w- w- doctors actually use a lot of these technologies themselves. Right. So, so it's not that, that you can actually go to a doctor's office, they do the x-rays, and then maybe there is a computer in the back that kind of confirms their diagnosis. So in a way, it's actually making them feel more comfortable about the diagnosis that they give you, right? Check up in other terms and conditions that no one will read. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Check, accept, and move right. on. Yeah. So, you know, you, you talked, though, about, you know, the whole, you know, data sample size and, and getting more data and analytics. So, like, how... How does that wrap around HIPAA, you know, and all the stuff about data privacy and and patient privacy and yeah, so that's actually a, a huge debate uh, amongst uh, you know everyone involved in the you know in in the healthcare industry. Um, there, there there is a part of uh, as of course that is concerned with privacy, specifically individuals and, and you know and our members are, are concerned with with their own privacy, and we actually are uh, employing, of course, you know the the best uh, security systems, uh, w- you know, we can because, of course, you know, we believe in the price of our members. There is also the component that is more about medicine and the development of, of, of cure and, uh, you know, to, to any sort of uh, type type of event or, right. you know, or any, you know, sort of type of conditions where uh, we, we can collaborate um, with, uh, with institutions to kind of, you know, develop better, better diagnostics and better right. medicine. Now the data in these cases uh, is really de-identified, where basically you know the the, uh, the privacy of our members is still maintained, yet we actually uh, could could use the information uh, as other institutions. Like if you're actually talking about, for instance, the, the University of Michigan is now actually working on it. I think it's a hundred million dollar yeah. program to improve healthcare in Michigan, right? And so the data that they're going to be using uh, is data that is de-identified. But it will actually reveal um, uh, patterns uh, in the population, uh, in zip codes, where there might be actually certain type of illnesses that are more, um, uh, you know, present than others. Uh, so that will actually really open up uh, studies in terms of maybe wind patterns uh, as to where, uh, you know, toxic fumes may, right. be, might, might be generated. So where was that when Aaron Brockovich yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. so, yeah, there, there you go. But, but, but to say that, uh, you know, the, there is a lot of good in, uh, in being able to actually uh, do analytics. Uh, and then it's up to the individual to, to wanting to really disclose their information to the benefit of science, right? And not necessarily my name and last name, but... Yeah, I would assume it would be know, sanitized and yeah, yeah, anonymized so, a little bit. Exactly. But yeah. so basically, you know, I'm a male and I'm a certain age and, uh, and what have you. So basically, they kind of use these parameters to right. kind of determine uh, d- determine the, the analytics and patterns, right? But but definitely, you know, in, term, term, in terms of privacy, then, uh, you know, we take privacy very seriously and, uh, and we definitely are employing the best uh, security we can to kind of really protect the, the identity and, uh, and the information of our members. Very cool. So what's I guess what's what's next with Blue Cross? I mean, like what what's on the horizon that you know maybe I, I mean you know we don't need your trade secrets or anything, but <laughs> <laughs> but you know like what what's on the horizon that you know you know is coming soon for you know for for Blue Cross Blue Shield members or you know anybody like that? Yeah. So uh, transparency is actually one of the activities that we're going to try to 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 launch in the next uh, you know couple of years. And transparency is kind of really more about uh, making sure that individuals like you and I understands where to actually get the best uh, care possible at the lower price. So okay. Imagine actually having, um, I don't know if you actually use GasBuddy. Yeah. GasBuddy is uh, like the application that basically you're, you're driving around and you're kind of looking at gas prices. Right, in your area, area yeah. And it's like, you know, one mile away, it's $1.75, but two miles away, it's $1.65, and you right. don't want to take that extra mile, right? So something similar to that where basically if you're trying to actually get an X-ray, uh, you'll now know where in, in your neighborhood you can actually get the same type of x-rays at a lower price, right? Uh, where, you know, that there might be, you know, there might be physicians that actually charge you a little more, some physicians that charge you a little less, and right. you can actually compare that to their star rating, right, and, uh, and decide, well, I'm going to spend a little more, but this guy actually has five stars rather than actually spending a little less. Oh, man, Yelp for doctors. Better. Can you even imagine? Oh. So, <laughs> and, and, and this is not necessarily something that, that Blue Cross, you know. It, right. It, this is like a, it, Just you know, from an industry a, a, perspective. From an industry yep. perspective, this is actually what's going to happen. But that was one of the things I wanted to talk to you. Maybe we'll hit segment three and talk about it more. 
But if you look at healthcare versus any other industry, right? If I need a plumber to my home, yeah. um, I know he's eighty-five bucks an hour, and I know parts are extra, and he's going to tell me what parts I need. Do you want to proceed? Right? Healthcare is different because, like, uh, for example, my daughter had a concussion at a so- soccer game, and then you get the bill three weeks later, and you have no, you know, obviously you have to take her to the emergency room, and then you get this bill, and you're like, oh my god, what was, you know? And you can't necessarily at this point in time. Oh, I got to take my kid to ER. Let's go. Let's go to you know doctor buddy and find out who's the cheap doctor. <laughs> you know, so it's a, so it's a different. It's it's it's, it's a paradox. It, it's a it's a difficult decision to make. But you want the transparency, obviously, because oh, let's sneak in a Tylenol for seventy five bucks and all that. Hot, you know. Well, and you don't necessarily want to cheap out when it comes to your kid's concussion. No, no, <laughs> right. good call. Doesn't Walmart have a doctor? Right? Right. Right. No, but you, do you understand what I'm saying? Though, but, right? but it is actually about creating that level of transparency mm-hmm. so that basically you can actually make the decision. Now, in case of emergency, of course, you need to go to the emergency room, and, and basically that that's you know per se taken care of. But um, but when, when you actually have a choice, when you when you and this is actually not something that we're actually driving within the industry ourselves, right? So consumers are actually driving the industry to go in that direction because, you know, as, as you can actually just Yelp your right. restaurant, uh, you know, then basically people want to Yelp their doctors. Uh, and so since we are part of the industry, then basically we're going to try to actually create a lot more information that people can rely on in order to be able to actually pick the right uh, physician at the moment of care. Mm. No, I mean, that's good to know. I mean, it's, and it, is, I mean, it could be one of those things where, you know what, hey, I think I'm getting a sinus infection, it's not critical that I go see somebody right now. So, yeah, I mean, you might want to take that, you know, because, I mean, well, look at, uh, I forget, it, but yeah, it, it, with DMC, I think it is, that has the, you go to their website and it shows you the wait times. Yeah. You, you know, from, yeah. You know, so, I mean, you, you take that step. Why not take the step to see? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. So, and if you're actually looking at uh, other improvements, um, when you're now actually reserving, so it, I don't know if what your experience is in actually making a reservation to go see your doctor for, for, for like a physical or whatever, right? Okay. Horrible. Yeah, there <laughs> but, but there are companies, uh, you know, there are companies in Chicago, for instance, that, uh, that basically allow you to, uh, to, to have your own app. Uh, and you can actually, much like you're, you're, you're scheduling for an appointment for, for your haircut. Right. Right. You, you, you can say, well, I'm, I'm just going to come in for a physical. They give you, like, the availability of, uh, of what doctor can actually see you and when. If it actually matches your schedule, you, you basically make your own reservation with your phone. You walk in, they already know your name. Uh, you don't have to wait. Uh, and you basically are getting a physical within the 45 minutes or 35 minutes that they actually schedule you for. Uh, and it is a lot more of a personal experience or personalized experience that done in the past, right? So the industry, again, is changing because of the fact that consumers are now expecting a lot more for uh, their dollars, right? And so that, that they're starting to actually really compare the experience, and really the experience becomes uh, a deciding factor to actually go see one doctor versus another. Well, I want my, like my dentist, for example, they will hound me till the ends of hell and beyond to get my tooth teeth cleaning every six months, but my doctor won't. But you think that it should be opposite, right? Like, I, I almost want my doctor saying, hey, you need to come in to, to get tricked up. Well, I, I guess here's my follow-up to that. Cause, so is, uh, is health care the next IT from the standpoint of in the 80s, you know, 70s, 80s, even into the 90s, your sysadmins, your doctors of the IT industry were the wizards in the back room – you didn't ask what happened in the back room. You didn't understand what happened in the back room. They just appeared in a puff of smoke and solved problems and then went away. That's kind of what the medical industry is for a lot of people, too. And it seems like this is starting to blow away some of that smoke yeah. and make people understand it more. Yeah, I think that, honestly, the, the leveraging of data uh, for uh, healthcare analytics is really going to become uh, the next big thing for, for our industry. Because doctors, again, will also rely on analytics and not just on their, uh, you know, experience and, uh, you know, um, knowledge and, uh, and education. Uh, and so you'll actually see that, uh, and we're also uh, investing, uh, you know, at Blue Cross to really produce these analytics for our doctors. So basically th- th- there are terms like population health management. Right. Population health management is where, again, we're going to try to actually drive analytics and actually define populations that can be um, – uh, you know, help uh, through, uh, through through some sort of either you know holistic uh, approach and or uh, different type of uh, you know medicine 
to be able to actually improve their health. Uh, and so, uh, again, the use of analytics, the use of, of data, and now we're actually starting to collect a lot more information, like when you're, when you're going to the doctor, most doctors now are inputting information into, into a computer, right? Right. A terminal server. Yeah, a tablet or something, yeah. Yeah, so, but... Um, most of these doctors really don't have the capacities uh, and, and, and even like the, 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 the money to, back, to basically invest to actually do analytics on their own. So they're actually relying on separate companies, including our own, to actually run analytics for them. And okay. so because of the fact that we actually manage a population of, of several millions of, uh, you know, of, of members, and right. we actually have access to the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association network. We're actually able to run analytics of about 150 million lives, right? So wow. when you're actually doing that, um, you can really determine uh, if, for instance, uh, you know, a certain population uh, is being managed correctly compared to others, and you can actually start to look at different uh, providers and start comparing which one of the providers that are prescribing medicine that eventually leads to care versus providers that are prescribing medicine that doesn't lead to better results. Right. And connecting the two and saying, well, you know, we've learned from this practice that if you actually are treating someone with these conditions, this specific medicine is better than the one that you're actually using. Right. So we're mm. actually trying to, to, to create this type of analytics so that we can actually help uh, it, you know, people that are actually showing up at the office. Now, we cannot prescribe directly as an insurance company. Right. But we're really helping providers to to leverage our analytics to to perform better better care for our members. Well, I mean, and I could even see where it would help from the stand, from an analytics perspective. Like, hey, you doctor in our network in Region Y, mm-hmm. we're starting to see an uptick in X. Brace for it. Like, hey, there's a you know there's a heavy duty flu outbreak yeah, right. happening in that area. There's you know whatever. Yeah, and uh, and I can tell you that uh, n- now we're actually starting to enter into the studies of uh, of um, pharmaceuticals. I don't know if you know, but basically not every pharmaceutical is really effective on every. No. Right? <laughs> so, uh, so ima- but, but imagine, imagine, you know, I- imagine now your doctor prescribing you a medicine that can cost fifteen thousand dollars per per shot, right? Right. Now, if it cures your your problem, then basically we're all happy. You're happy. Blue yeah. is happy. The doctor is happy. But if he doesn't, now all of a sudden you're actually spending $15,000 a shot. We're, we're basically covering you for $15,000 a shot. And if there is really no result. That's not doing anything for you. Yeah. The next big thing I think is really going to be around uh, personalized medicine, where basically drugs will be prescribed to you knowingly that it will cause certain side effects rather than actually, you know, Reading the list of side effects, and you're like, "Well, I hope I'm not going to." Oh, dude, that's, that ho- one. that's horrible! Like, right, like right. the list of side effects that like whip through the screen at the end of a commercial at like ninety thousand right. miles an always, hour. It's always, like, all I had was a headache. I don't need right. anal leakage and failure to eat, and I won't sleep for nine days. And, <laughs> yeah. and I'll, I'll, I got a headache. I'm that's good. The, that's the joke in the house. Every pill commercial is like, "Make and co- may cause diarrhea." It's like the last <laughs> one. It's like, <laughs> <"Quite> <laughs> a while, can I get it? <laughs> right, but but imagine imagine being able to actually being able to actually make that choice. So, so if you know that basically the, the pharmaceutical is going to be effective on you, maybe you don't mind actually one of these side effects, right? right. But you probably, but, but you want to make that choice, right? Yeah. You don't want for, for, for the pharmaceutical company to just try it out on you and say, right. well, if it works, great. If it doesn't work, then try something else, yeah. right? So, so it's going to become a lot more specific. And, uh, and again, with analytics, uh, I really feel that, uh, that the field of medicine is going, to, is going to improve tremendously. So we haven't seen anything yet. So we're now actually decoding the genome. We, we can really understand what makes me, you, you know, everyone actually different from each other. And so medicine is going to become very specific to That's uh, who you are. I never wanted to be a geek. Okay, there you go. I was a biochem. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But I, I, would, I, I interned at Genentech back in the day. So yeah, yeah. So that's uh, that, that that's that's where the advancement is going to is going to occur. And of course, uh, at Blue Cross, we're going to try to kind of really keep uh, keep up to to the pace of technology. Well, that was one of our first questions I had for you after you were describing to me what what Blue Cross is doing. I go, well, do you even consider yourself a healthcare company more? Or are you a tech company? And you look straight in the face. He's like, we're a technology company. Yeah. And it might be hard to a hard pill to swallow. No pardon the pun. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, are, <laughs> yeah. Do you? I mean, are, do you consider yourselves a technology company, or is it just do you, well, technology enables you to be a, a healthcare provider? Yeah. So uh, first of all, of course, you know, you, you probably already know that we are the largest insurance company in uh, you know in Michigan. Mm-hmm. And but what people might not know is we're also one of the largest IT employers in Michigan, uh, and uh, one out of seven employees at Blue Cross is in IT. 
So we have uh, about a thousand folks uh, that work in uh, you know in our RTD department, and about seven thousand people, of course, uh, you know overall. Did you follow uh, that math, Bob? You know, yes. But but, okay. but but we are. I'm good at math. But but you know, not too many people uh, or not too many companies now uh, can really exist without without technology, right? And so the reason why I said that we, we, we are also a technology company is because of the fact that really through you know all these analytics that I'm be, that I've been talking right. about, right, would not be able to exist uh, without technology. You know, you c- we could, but it's really hard to actually crunch you know 150 million. Uh, you know, records. Right. Yeah, you're not going to do that. Actually, make sense. Yeah, you're not going to do that in a, with filing cabinets. No, that's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so basically, uh, and so we need to actually keep up with uh, with the technology, with the latest technologies for analytics, um, because uh, because I think that the science of uh, of these analytics are really helping people's lives. Right. So basically, our mission is to really kind of improve people's lives and making sure that uh, not only our member, but 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 in general, right, that we can actually improve the health of uh, the people of Michigan. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, I, I know we, we've already run longer than I, than than our, our normal segment. Is, is there anything that we haven't touched on that, that you wanted to hit on? No. This is, this, this was uh, like a great conversation. I really love being on the show. So. Good. Good. Yeah. We will absolutely. If we haven't scared you off, we will absolutely <laughs> want to have you back on here. Good, that, that this. Yeah, we could talk all night. <laughs> <laughs> But hey, uh, we're going to take a quick break, and we uh, this is IT in the D show, and uh, we'll be right back. IT in the D. Read, meet, listen. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. Hi, I'm Brittany Daniel from The Game, and you're listening to IT in the D show. IT in the D.com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Welcome back. Segment three. This is the IT and the D show live from Podcast Detroit. This is episode 121. We're hanging out in beautiful Ferndale, Michigan. This is Bob, the sales guy here with Dave, the geek. Nuri apparently is in Cambodia. Find us online, itandthed.com, and you can hit up all our social and do all that fun, happy stuff. But do us a favor. Mark your calendars. Thursday, December 10th, Falling Down Beer Company. Uh, we 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 own in the place. They they closing it down for us, <laughs> and we're having our uh, toy drive for Operation Kid Equip. Bring some toys. Bring some. Uh, did I say wrapped last time? No, unwrapped. unwrapped toys. Unwrapped. Yes. Um, bring. Some Not that we don't trust you, but we don't trust you. Uh, well, they don't. Kids don't want <laughs> cornbread packages. No. Um, <laughs> as Stephanie almost spit out her pop. <laughs> I did. Um, but yeah, in ten days of Star Wars. Yeah. I'm, uh, so hey, well, and we we didn't let him leave, uh, so we've still got Leo here because uh, we we we're, we're having a phenomenal conversation, and as always happens during the break, we realized something we probably should touch on a little bit, and so for Leo, for those who aren't in the know that like aren't you know used to playing in with these roles, tell our audience. So what is a CTO, and, and what does a CTO of say a Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan do? Yeah, so uh, the chief technology officer uh, role uh, is more focused on uh, on transformation. You know, I kind of you know compared it to like a chief transformation officer or a chief like think different uh, officer. Uh, so it's someone that um, companies uh, employ to when they're actually about to transform um, how they actually go about doing business. Um, so it is usually a sign of a company that, that is going through a tremendous amount of transformation. Um, and uh, you know, as you well know, the the healthcare industry is going through a tremendous amount of transformation, and so we need to reframe, uh, you know, and retool, uh, you know, our IT infrastructure uh, to be able to compete, uh, you know, in our market. Uh, now, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the, the teams that, that I managed to to execute the function of uh, of a, of the CTO. Uh, I have uh, one team that is focused on innovation, um, and that is actually uh, dealing with uh, those are the people that have all the fun. And we can actually maybe have like a whole show on innovation, and, right? You know, to, 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 to let you know exactly how you know what we're actually trying to do. Uh, then there is a team that is actually responsible for strategies, uh, specifically you know IT strategies, and these are not just IT strategies for IT. But everything that actually happens in my office, per se, uh, is closely tied to the business. Uh, so we don't do anything for IT sake. I mean, uh, most of us are geeks. I mean, I started out as a geek, of course. Uh, but, uh, but it is more about the dialogue with the business and educating them as to what technology can do for the business. Because we, we have great business folks, uh, great business partners. Um, 
And, and basically our role is to educate them as to how they can actually change what they do uh, and really amplify the value that they provide to our members using technology. Then I have a team that is uh, the architecture team, uh, and so these are actually the folks that really design the solution. So once we actually have reached uh, agreement through innovation and strategy, uh, then, then we actually are creating uh, the solution themselves, and so it's kind of like the, the solution architecture. I have the information uh, or enterprise information management team, which is actually doing a lot of the analytics, um, and uh, so we're actually partnering with the business in, you know, in actually crunching all these data right. that we've been talking about in the, in the previous segment. And then I actually have a team that is really aligned to what we call healthcare value, which is all of these, uh, you know, analytics that we talked about that we provide to, uh, to, to the providers and, uh, and hospitals and for them to actually be able to, to provide better services to our, to, to our clients. So, again, in short, uh, it is a role uh, that is about transformation and it's about really taking the company to our next step. Uh, and so we really are closely aligned with the strategy team of the of the enterprise. Uh, so they decide how and what Blue Cross Blue Shield will do in the next three to five years, and we're there to basically support their their vision with uh, with technology solutions that are innovative and uh, and forward thinking. So you, do you guys also have a CIO? Is there yeah. a, is there a di- so what's the difference in roles? Uh, so the CIO is my boss, right? Okay. And so I report to the CIO. Uh, like he, of course, you know, his responsibility is also around, uh, you know, application support, application development, production support. So he actually has teams, you know, of application developers. He has teams that do uh, the production support and infrastructure support. He has teams that do uh, project uh, project management. He, he's got a finance team. So he, his view is a lot broader than uh, than just my role. My role is purely transformational. Uh, and it's really focused on uh, on kind of you know creating new capabilities to the enterprise. So it almost sounds strategic versus tactical. Um, I, I wouldn't say that. So basically, the, the role of the CIO needs to also be strategic, um, but uh, but he is also he's very much concerned with uh, with the day to day operation of you know of IT and uh, and the reliability uh, of, uh, of you know of our company. Okay. Yeah, not, not that I'm not. I, I, I am too, <laughs> but but my, my role is kind of making sure that the next generation of, of IT is going to be hopefully more, even more reliable than what we actually have today. So how much, when you guys come up with your ideas or, or talk about the next wave of transformation, how much is homegrown versus versus uh, collaborating with peer groups and other like Blue Crosses networks across the country? Do you do that? That's actually really a great question. Not too many people know that Blue Cross Blue Shield is a national brand uh, and that we actually uh, resell the Blue Cross Blue Shield Association product in, in different states. So, yes, we actually That's one of those four. disclaimers on that. The Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan is oh, an independent licensee yeah, of... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but, that, but that's a good point, right? So one of the strengths of Blue Cross is that uh, we, we basically have multiple Blue Cross Blue Shield uh, uh, companies and we actually get together mostly like twice a year to discuss uh, specific topics. So we actually have like an architecture forum or an information management forum or an analytics forum. And so, uh, you know, all the Blue Cross Blue Shield actually get together to really discuss, you know, how are they solving the problem, right? Which is actually different than national, national account players. Right. Because basically th- they have, you know, uh, smart people, uh, you know, but, but, you know, it's, it's one solution versus, you know, we can actually leverage 20, 26 different type of solutions and really pick the one that is best and then accelerate toward the direction that that specific company has taken. Mm-hmm. So it really allows us to, to, to network. Uh, so we, we have, uh, we have really close networks of, uh, of individuals that are, that are talking, I'm not saying on, on a daily basis, but, 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 uh, you know, th- the nice thing is that it's a non-competitive type of discussion, right? So basically, we're all working to help each other, uh, and so you know, from the social network perspective, right. we're definitely trying to leverage that to, to create better better IT solutions. So, yeah. so I mean, from a, from a, you're, you know, being a brand and being Blue Cross, you know, we had Comcast in here, and obviously their their PR is probably is different, if not similar to yours. Is it? Is it nightmarish managing social, or is it is it very gentle? I mean, wh- where where is it in terms of uh, being brash and you know in terms of social? Uh, yeah, so I, I think that most of our social uh, interactions are about wellness. Uh, so we believe in uh, in the wellness of our members. We believe that wellness is really uh, a much better approach than, uh, than, than than care per se, right? So basically, if you take care of yourself, eventually you know you don't get sick. It's very, it's very right. simple, right? And so most of the information that you'll find on our, you know, our, on our social uh, network is about making sure that our members can, um, you know, be um, 
inspired to actually conduct a better better type of you know life. Yeah, I got to be honest, I can't really see myself going to like the BCBSM Facebook page and going, hey, I got a, I took a picture of this rash. <laughs> Could you guys take a look at this? And there probably is <laughs> some people. There are people that do that. I'm uh, sure. yeah. Come on. <laughs> if you can think it, it happens. <laughs> like, trust me. Yeah. Probably every other day. So you know, you mentioned. So what is that? Like, what is that IT roadmap? It like look like from a like how, like how far down the road because I mean I guess that's got to be one of the struggles is you know it, it's it, it's hard to say okay y- yeah the next year or so I pretty much know I'm, I'm fairly confident what's going to happen once you get two years out yeah I'm about seventy percent there that three to five to ten year range is where you know there could be radical shifts in technology there's you know always disruption going on that kind of stuff so like, how how do you balance that sort of thing yeah so basically it, it is the execution in a in a bimodal or trimodal almost you know uh, type type of fashion right where basically we we are definitely trying to experiment with uh, innovation and try to actually get to rapid results mm-hmm. uh, by doing fast prototyping and making sure that that our you know client or customers can can you know feel what solutions we're actually about to develop, and then there is the the, the more agile responding to market responding to uh, regulations uh, where we, we we're trying to kind of really deploy uh, mm-hmm. based on certain dates and uh, and try to actually beat our competition, and then there is more uh, designs that are kind of really more. Uh, long lasting and uh, what we're basically the result it doesn't actually necessarily actually appear next year so we actually have different type of uh, uh, roadmaps and plans uh, depending also on uh, what part is actually what, what our competition is doing right and part of it is also uh, trying to make sure that we can stay ahead and Blue Cross Blue Shield of uh, Michigan is actually being viewed by by many of the other blues as uh, as leading in uh, you know in many areas of care so yeah, not bad to hear. No, no. not at all. <laughs> all right. Well, hey, uh, Leo. Again, thank you. Uh, yeah. You know, for, for sitting down. I mean, th- this has been uh, very informative. Thank just for my, it's been a very good conversation from my perspective. I hope you enjoyed yourself as well. Loved it. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So hey, we're gonna uh, we're gonna take another quick break here. We are gonna come back with Stephanie, who has been uh, so so incredibly patient with us uh, to talk about Master Plot Comics. I, I'm so gonna ask her about drunk dorks, whether she wants me to or not. Uh, I absolutely <laughs> want to ask her about that. <laughs> and so yeah, we'll uh, we'll be back on the other side in just a few. It's the IT in the D show. And we'll be right back. IT in the D. Read, meet, listen. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. Hey guys, it's Time Hog, Bruce Leroy from The Last Dragon. You're listening to the IT and D show. IT in the D.com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D show. Welcome back. Segment four. This is the IT and the D show. We are live in Podcast Detroit here in beautiful Ferndale, Michigan. It's Monday, December the 7th. Are you kidding me? Uh, seriously, when it was June, like yesterday, it does seem that way. This is Bob, the sales guy, always hanging out with Dave the Geek, Nuri the FNGs in Cambodia. Find us. No, I'm not kidding either. That's, That's the story he's sticking to. It. Yeah, exactly. He's probably in like <laughs> Lake Orion. But, um, <laughs> find us online, itthe.com, and uh, find us all, all the social stuff. Follow us in the Instagrams and all that good, happy stuff. Don't forget, Thursday, December 10th, this Thursday, right? Not just yes. December 10th, this Thursday. This right, Thursday. Yeah, thank you. Um, we'll be at Falling Down Brewery for our annual toy drive. For Operation Kid Equip, bring some toys, bring some cash, have some laughs, and watch Dave get slapped. Um, Are we really going to do that again this year? Yeah. You're going to have to get me really, really drunk for that yeah. again this year. It's not going to be hard. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but hey, this uh, this segment of the IT and the D show is brought to you by our friends at Braintree. Mobile developers around the world have embraced their V.0 SDK is the easiest way to add secure mobile payments to their apps and websites. No matter what the payment type is, Braintree will accept it. Apple Pay, Android Pay, PayPal, Venmo, credit cards, Visa, MasterCard, Amex, even Bitcoin. I gotta follow, I gotta find out what this Bitcoin thing. And if something new pops up, <laughs> they will support it too. It's All the, the kids are doing it. They're, they're, are they? The kids can't afford to do Bitcoin. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's the same <laughs> payment solution used by Uber, Airbnb, GitHub, Grubbable, so you know it scales. Integrating into your app is easy as inserting just a few lines of code. And if you have trouble, they will walk you through it. Just don't take our word for it. Try out their sandbox. See for yourself. Go to Braintree Payments. 
dot com slash lowercase it. That's Braintree Payments dot com lower slash lowercase it. Well I done, did, Bob. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> Nuri's been doing that one lately, so I'm like, oh my god, I gotta, I want to mess up. <laughs> All right, so hey, having waited patiently, uh, we are now going to talk with Stephanie Menard. Uh, she is here. We met you uh, a few weeks ago um, at the Chaos and Insanity that was Fantasticon. Yeah. Um, it, that was like our first time getting a booth anywhere. Um, Ours too. Really? So, yeah. Uh, Firsties. There you go. Um, and it was it was interesting. And so, you know, we got to yakking and talking, and you guys came and hung out with us a little bit. So what is Master Plot Comics? Uh, I mean, obviously we know because we actually paid attention when you were talking to us. But for those who don't know, <laughs> speak for yourself. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's like, I don't remember anything. Who are you again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Master Plot Comics is a new publishing company. Uh, we started in... July, actually. So we're... Oh, real new. We are, we're like babies. We're only four months old. So. You're like us with this network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. Um, and I was asked to be a partner uh, within two months of joining them, which was amazing. Uh, Brian Lee Bird and Sarah Hollis are the original partners. And I was doing podcasts and articles for them, and they just decided to let me uh, Apparently you were killing them. it. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Maybe I was just super nice and they were like, okay, we'll put some of the, you know, more responsibility on you. Right. So <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah. So now what, so what does, I mean, obviously one would hope comics, but right. like, so like what sort of titles, what kind of, like what genre does Master Plot tend to play in? Um, we're big into like horror stuff, like thrillers. We kind of, we like, I'm not gonna, I had no idea that horror comics were such a thing. They are. And when they're done really well, they're amazing. Well, even like Walking Dead. Who knew that? I didn't know that was a comic before the show. Yeah. How many people that watch the show knew it was a comic? Right. You know. I didn't. And now I'm reading the comics, and it's great because they're different from the show. So yeah. it's like it's like a whole new experience with some of the same characters, but different stuff happens. Yep. It's very exciting. Well, like, the problem is you're getting spoilers now. From the people that read the comics, like, oh, Brick's going to lose his hand. Well, but not necessarily. <laughs> well, like, well, like you know, Daryl okay. wasn't in the comic. I mean, that, that's a huge character on the show. Wasn't a part of the comic at all. So, I mean, there's, and they've already diverged a few different times from I said, it. said, like, so. three words the entire show. I don't know how he's such a big star. <laughs> Crossbow. Exactly. Crossbow. <laughs> Where are my arrows? Arrows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, everybody loves them. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, that's, I mean it, it seems like that's, a, I mean, it, it, growing... You know, I don't, I don't want to call it a niche. I don't want to downplay it. But, I mean, it's like that's a growing genre that more and more people are looking for. Absolutely. Um, and we have uh, a comic coming out called 100 Tears, which is based on a 2007 um, indie film that is about a clown. Yes, a clown. So I your know. favorite, Bob. Yeah. I'll buy you a comic. Everybody loves a clown, right? Oh, yeah. I can't wait to buy it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can have nightmares forever. I'll see you there. That's yeah. kind of the whole point. <laughs> um, but we, we adapted it. Actually, my partners, they wrote it. They adapted it from the film. And we have our art director, who is in Russia, who did the art along with Robert Nugent. And they're both amazing. I've seen – it's almost finished. I've seen almost all the pages. And they are like – they're they're – Beautiful, but they're horrifying. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you can't look away, even though it's just kind of disgusting. But like in a good way. I don't know. I love horror stuff, so maybe that's just me. So it's like the guy at the bar when we were there with Neil the other day. It was horrifying, but we couldn't look away. Like oh a my train God. wreck. But like a <laughs> train wreck. I'm gonna tell a story. <laughs> Guy's standing up with plumber's butt, and like you couldn't. And I don't know how that ha works because you're st standing up. And it's like and so I kept po poking them. I'm like, look, 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 and they kept looking. It was like looking at a bad horror movie. <laughs> and they're like, quit making me look. Because every time I said look, they would go anywhere. Like oh, Bob. Like <laughs> so. Like so for those who don't know, like oh, I don't know, say me. Um, like how long does a, it does a comic like that take to put together? It really depends on the team and the timeline. Um, with 100 Tears, we've been working on that for um, at least two months, and it's still not finished, So, but it's going to be ready for the first quarter. So okay. we're really looking forward to that. Um, I'm, I'm working on a couple comics myself, and I'm, I just got my art team for my first comic, and I'm super pumped. And that's going to take about three months because I, I basically said, this needs to be done by this date. If you can't do it, don't sign up. 
And so do you still make fun of the tra- hang on, Dave. <laughs> do you still make fun of the tracers? Is that is that gone with the uh, with chasing, chasing me? Or is that- You're a tracer. <laughs> no, nobody makes fun of them. They work so hard. They um, do such wonderful work. You, you can't make fun of them. I mean, they're amazing. Just you still got to use the one liners. You're a tracer. <laughs> So now, like, are you ta- are you taking this on? Like, are you going from because again, stuff I didn't know. Um, the right there are writers, and then there are artists. Like, that's not the same person usually. Yeah, there are some people that do both. Um, like Dan Doherty, um, he does he writes and he does a lot of his own art. Um, I'm a writer. I if don't ask me to draw because you're going to get a stick figure that looks <laughs> not even like a stick figure. So it's like <laughs> it's the saddest thing of all time. Um, but usually you have a team, you have a writer, or you can also have two writers. A lot of people do co-writing. Um, you have um, an inker, uh, a penciler, or they sometimes they do both. You have a letterer, and then you have a colorist. So it really depends. Some people do multiple things. I prefer to have different people do different things because I like the way it comes out. It looks different, and you have a bunch of different styles come together. Right. And it gives you like a different... A different perspective on it, I guess. So is this still being done by hand? Are you guys using digital? Um, It depends on who's working on it. There there are people, most people do digital. Um, That's kind of like the new wave. It's a lot easier. And I've seen, uh, they do breakdowns where um, you can watch people do it. uh, They do videos. And you can watch them like pencil and then ink over something and like quick time. So it's like really fast and it's amazing what you can do with these programs now. They used to have to do it by hand, but technology. Right, I was just wondering amazing. how many people like still like to do it old school. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. It, it really just depends on the artist. There's so many different different ways that people go about it. So I don't know. You well, have, to, you have to ask them. It's I guess. not that different. I mean, yeah, you know, Simpsons I'm, for South Park. You know? Well, or <laughs> you know, I you got your Java developers, your .NET developers, your graphics designers. I mean, it, it's. It sounds like there's that same kind of parallel yeah, there. Yeah, it's perf- It's personal preference, really. So, okay. So, and we'll come back to Matt. So, talk, talk to me about Drunk Dorks. <laughs> well, <laughs> drunk Dorks is like my origin story. It's like my, you know, That's, my Wolverine your or- origin story. Um, <laughs> me and three of my really good friends decided that we were going to just start a website and we were going to talk about all the nerdy stuff we wanted to talk about. And we started that about mm, like three years ago, two and a half years ago. And it, it was amazing. I still do it. It's it's still part of what I do. Um, not as frequently as I would like to, but... It's amazing how our hobbies fall by the wayside because life. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I could be knitting right now. Right. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> uh, but it's uh, like my best friend of 17 years, um, Shim and Brett and Rico, we just pretty much talk about like pop culture stuff and comics and movies and I'm, I'm not buying that Shim and Brett and Rico are real people are you? Just <laughs> <laughs> figments of my imagination. It's like Menudo, just... like hang out with Menudo. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, they are real people. I promise. I, I'm not that good of voices. So if you listen to our podcast, Wait, I can't Niagara sound Falls, like you would know exactly <laughs> any one of them. Canadian. <laughs> So I mean, so I mean, is, is it? I mean, is that is that a public website where you're, that you're looking for people to go to and chime in on stuff? Or? Yeah, actually, it's uh, drunkdorks.com, and we've been like I said, we've had a website I think for two years now, and we do articles and podcasts and uh, videos, and I mean, pretty much anything you can think of, we do. So it, it's a lot of fun. We're just a bunch of huge nerds, and we're all very opinionated and. Sometimes we yell at each other. That never happens. No, no, no. <laughs> I know, right? Nobody new? ever gets new? upset about anything. <laughs> yeah. You know, everybody just hugs and everything's great. Right. So it's, uh, yeah, how to offend people on the internet. Step one, post your opinion about anything. Step two, wait. Right. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. So, yeah, that's that's where um, that's where this career came from is we just decided to do something and – Somebody saw my stuff and thought it was good, and they pulled me in. So, so like when, when like, you, so you didn't grow up thinking this is what you wanted to do. Like, what, what was the expectation of life that this has now taken over? Uh, like I said, I, I never <laughs> wanted to be a geek. I, I was gonna, I, I was gonna cure cancer. That was, I was gonna biochem. That was, that was what I wanted to get into. And then this happened. Yeah, it's usually the way it works, isn't it? Yeah, you, you start off doing 
one thing and then it, it rolls into something else. I'm actually doing, like, my day job is what I wanted to do when I grew up, is just helping people. I work for a nonprofit, and uh, we help people who are developmentally disabled and mentally impaired um, get skills, vocational skills, to okay. get jobs in the community. So they're not just, like, they're people, and they deserve to live their dreams and if they want to work somewhere or do something that's what we help them do so i do that by day and then by night i'm like a computer slave because i'm just like (laughs) typing (laughs) scripts and like doing press releases and i'm just like i need a nap and i never get one except for today it's a detroit hustle thing i keep saying you have your job and you have what you love to you know exactly not like i don't love my job i do but the the passion projects like everyone we talk to everyone we bring in here you know, I, I was joking. Like everyone thought, like when you know, when I was DJing at the the bars, that that was my job. It's like, no, I have a job. This I do this for fun, right? You know, even that's what I, you know. I kind of wake up t- to do this. Absolutely, and it when the thing that you do for for passion, I think, is a lot more rewarding. I mean, I love my job, but I also I've been writing since I was little, and I've always wanted to be a writer, and this gives me that opportunity. So I'm very happy and. Uh, I mean, I do complain sometimes because sleep is good, and I don't get a lot of it. But that's just you could get one of those sleep life. monitors. We were talking. About. I know. I need See, one of those. And, but honestly, like, here's what I'm afraid. Like, I would get one of those things, and like my typical like three to four hours a night, like I would wake up and look at it and be like, really? Like that's all I was doing. Like really? Uh, <laughs> or we could see like a middle finger. Right. Like, that's yeah. it. The digital outline of it flipping me through. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So there you go. So so what? Uh, okay, so that blends into master plot comics because I mean you know similar genres and that you know the same kind of interest. So then what? I guess what's what's next with master plot? I mean it, you know it, it 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 sounds like it's a relatively small operation right now. Yeah. Like absolutely. are are there are there delusions of grandeur? Like are oh, you? Absolutely you know? <laughs> there are. Come on. I mean anybody you get a dream big, right? You got to dream big. Somebody's got delusions of grandeur. <laughs> Um, we have we have a lot of things in the works. We have um, a bunch of comics coming out in the first quarter. We have um, uh, Psychopath, which is what I'm writing. It's two words, Psychopath. And um, I, it's a series, like a three-issue series. Okay. Um, that'll be spread out over the year. Um, we also have uh, The Infected, which is... One of the comics I'm I have nothing to Those do with. Those are the people it. posting the rashes on the Facebook page. Yes, Blue Cross exactly, right. <laughs> exactly. That's, the app was made for that. <laughs> um, that's coming out in January, and that's written by Chris Hartman, um, and the art's by uh, Dave Mims, and his art is gorgeous. Like it's unique. Yes, I know Mimsy. I know exactly where you're going. Yes. <laughs> it's a South Park reference. But yeah. No problem. So, uh, but uh, I, guess, I guess the. So, like, and I do because I've, I've gotten to know more artists um, and, and folks in the comic scene because of, of this and just going to cons and that kind of stuff. It seems like a lot of folks, like, how does, how does, like, do, are, do you guys launch Kickstarters to get stuff going? Because, I mean, like, I, or, you know, is it, like, how does, how does that project happen? Because I, I see a lot of indie folks that, you know, do a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter to, you know, to get their comic up and running and, like, do they do that? Like, because again, I don't know the process. Do they do that and then come to a master plot and say, "Hey, I have this and this bag of money, and I would like you guys to publish this for me." Like, if I, somebody came with, at me with a bag of money, I'd be like, I'll, "Whatever you want, man. <laughs> whatever you want. You give me that bag of money, we'll do this." Um, it really depends. As, as private dancer begins playing in the background, by the way, we. Personally, like we have a lot of people who work for us that are funding their own projects. I'm funding my own project. I think Kickstarter is a great tool, and um, I recommend it for a lot of people. I personally don't have the time or the energy. I'd rather just pay my artists and get my book out. But um, Kickstarter is a really great tool, and basically what you would do is you would probably wait to do your Kickstarter after you got a publisher, okay. if you're gonna, if you're looking for a publisher, there's a lot of people who just want to do it on their own, which is great. I'm all for self-publishing, and um, a lot of times with publishing companies, they will help you with your Kickstarter. If you come to them with a book that's already done or mostly done and just needs like a few tweaks, then they'll take you in if they think it's good and they'll help you with that. That's part of what Masterplot does as well. Okay, um, we've had a couple of really successful. Um, 
Kickstarters that we've just done. Um, we have Corey Hampshire's Clash, uh, which is going to be out, I think, in the first quarter. And Corey Hampshire, I don't, you probably don't know who he is, but he's... I grew up in New Hampshire. Okay. <laughs> well, it's not the same thing, but okay. Um, it, it's, it's a superhero book, but it's like way different than a superhero book. And he's kind of... He's kind of a big deal. I'm just going to say it. He's, like, you know, worked for the big two and, you know, he's a fantastic which artist. I Which I get. It's Marvel and DC. I, I, I follow that uh, Yeah, usually, you, usually people, when you say the big two, they're like, okay, we know what you're talking yeah. about. So um, we have uh, Judas Breed issue two, which is coming out through us, and that was a book that was already done before it came to us, but he decided to publish it through us. So we look for fully formed stuff as opposed to, like, we don't really take scripts. Hey, I've got this artists. idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, okay. I, I don't want to be that person, but I got please an do, email. Please do. Please do. I got an email from just, like, a random person, and it was, it should have been probably, like, 50 paragraphs, but it was, like, three and it was somebody who, <laughs> oh my God, I feel like the biggest jerk. <laughs> he was like. Don't worry, nobody listens to this show. So. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> he was just like, he, he, he's like, I want to get into writing and I don't really know how. I've been trying to get into comics. And he gave me like his entire script, but not in a script form. It was just him like writing it as he just was like. very stream of consciousness. Like he was talking to yeah. the person and I couldn't even get. I was, I was like, I, I dig your passion, kid, but you can't even... Step one, formatting. No. Thank you. Thank you. See, I didn't even have to say it. Step two, question mark. Step three, profit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's how it works. So you're big in the horror genre. Are you watching American Horror Story? Absolutely, I am. That has been... like So I'm all about... like I don't know if it's the 80s child in me or not. I love a good montage. Oh, And they yeah. are killing it with these amazing... Music montages. They've had some great music. The costumes this season are just gorgeous, and it's starting to not make sense a little bit. <laughs> um, but wow, is it entertaining! It's it, uh, this season is my second favorite season. The first one was my favorite. I loved it so much, and yeah, you know, every other season was like good, but it, okay, like not great. This no, one, I, I was surprised I how much it. I didn't hate Lady Gaga. Um, because, she, I mean, she's phenomenal in this thing, and I didn't think she was an actress, right? Yeah. By any stretch of the imagination. Um, but it's it's weird because you'll find, like, oh, my God, that's the two-headed chick from the, the free Circus Freak Show one. Like, everyone, like, they repurpose the characters, and it's, it, yeah. it almost takes, like, four episodes to, like, get your mindset out of <laughs> You're like, what they, they were. They're not this person anymore. Right? <laughs> right? I love it, though. I think it's great that they use these, these really good – I mean, they're so – their range is so – Amazing, and that's how they can do this. It, they it needs to be on Showtime, though. It needs to be on Showtime. Just get it over with. Like they, they, they draw the line. They're. I don't know if you watch it, Dave, or not. Uh, it's it's borderline like rated R stuff on FX. They. I mean, it's right there. Like you know, and, and they really do. They're like right on that line. It's like teetering. They're so close to just. Right. Falling over the other side. Like, just, just go on stars or something. Just you know, be like, be like Spartacus <laughs> and just get it over with. Um, well, so other, other than that, what's uh, what's some of your favorites? What's what else is uh, what else do you watch on a normal? Uh, like TV shows? No, just or... on, on the horror genre, comic stuff, or like whatever. Whatever. Um, well, my favorite horror movie is The Exorcist because because the Exorcist. because yeah yeah I, I really don't feel like I have to explain that to anybody. Yeah. Um, well, actually, that's I mean, I, I guess that's uh, let, let's make that question a little more pointed. So I know nothing about the horror comic genre. What do I go buy to take a look into it? Um, I would highly other than, of course, anything from Master Plot Comics. <laughs> 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 um, I would highly recommend Nailbiter. Okay. Uh, that is one that I follow that I absolutely love. It's captivating. The The writing and the art and just everything about it is pretty much perfection. Um, uh, Outcast, which is being made into uh, another show on um, AMC. They're, it's the same. Okay. It's Robert Kirkman. Okay, so same guy. Yeah. All right. And they're doing a show, and I'm so pumped for it. So pumped. It's like, it's about possession, and it, this guy, his life is like plagued by people around him that keep getting possessed, and he's trying to figure out what's going on. Very, very good. Wasn't that uh, Seven with Denzel? No, not Seven. Uh, uh, what was the one with Denzel Washington? 
Oh my God! Uh, time is fallen. on my side. Yeah, yeah fallen. <laughs> Every time I think of it, I'm like, I just want to sing that song. <laughs> I love that movie. It's so good. Um, but yeah, those are the two. Um, okay. And Tales of Mystery uh, by Joe Dirk. Banning. Good old Dirk. We've know? had him on our show. So have I. He's a he's a great guy. We had a we had a phenomenal uh, conversation with him. He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. I love you. <laughs> Don't worry, he's not listening. <laughs> someone, Probably someone, not. I'm, someone will post. Find out. He has a network. You know who's Randy? We'll go tell him because <laughs> Rand, Randy's already the, apparently crossbows do not fire arrows; they fire bolts or quarrels. Oh, whatever. <laughs> arrows give you quarrels. <laughs> so, all right. So, I mean, that, that's a good start. So, and then if I want to find out more about what Masterplot Comics has going on, like where can I go find out more? Uh, masterplotcomics.com you okay. can find us on Facebook at Masterplot Comics uh, we have a Twitter MPC and I gonna, uh, I, and see I almost I was gonna, I was going to go is that also Masterplot Comics and no it's not so yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know if anybody has any questions they can just email me I, I love getting emails it, I'm weird right? as long as there's formatting yes <laughs> <laughs> and you know and Period, what's your email commas, address? You know, like a little bit of... An actual know, sentence structure? Yeah, yeah, I enjoy that. It makes it a lot easier to read. So... And what's your email address? Stephanie at masterplotcomics. You spell Stephanie funny, though. S-T-E-F-A-N-I. Yes. At well, masterplotcomics.com. Well, she didn't spell it funny. No. <laughs> parents spell it funny. Parents spell it funny. No, I spell it funny. Oh. My parents had nothing to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> It, it was a life choice. So we all make those. You're like an M. Bradley. Like you don't want to be called Michael anymore, so you go by M. Bradley. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you you understand me? I like. This. I do. I was Robert. I decided to be Bob. You know, he loves it when you call him Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. And 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 drunk dorks is out at drunkdorks.com. Yes, and we have a Facebook as well. Just go to drunk dorks and. Uh, yeah, that's. I mean, and upcoming upcoming con shows, that kind of stuff. We can find you at. Ooh, um, uh, we're gonna be in uh, Wizard World Vegas in <sighs> March. That's our next. That sounds I, like a biggie. Yeah, um, I've been invited to a few, but I'm I don't like driving in the winter. <laughs> okay. So I'm like, nah, I think I'll wait. <laughs> it, it'll keep. Call me in the spring. <laughs> yeah, and then I have um, a bunch. Actually, I'm going to have to put it up on the website. There's a bunch of places we're going to be next year that we weren't at this year because obviously <laughs> Fantasticon was our yeah. Our well, first for one. just gearing up halfway through the year, exactly. Yeah. Like right towards the end of con season, I'm like. Okay, let's Perfect do this. time to launch a company that's con specific. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Why not? You know? <laughs> so um, but we'll have that listed on our website so people okay. know where they can find us. But we're we're located kind of all over the country and some of our employees don't even live in the country. So we're we're kind of all over the place. So it'll mostly be um, me doing stuff in the you know, the northeast over here and okay. then uh, Sarah and Brian will be doing stuff in the Midwest. So we're the Northeast? No. I feel like we're the Northeast. <laughs> no. So again, grew up in New England. That's the Northeast. Yes. This well, is that's Midwest. more Northeast, but I it's feel... It's Northeaster. North or Easter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so anything we didn't touch on that we should? Um, No, not really. I think we're good. All right. So everything's out at masterplotcomics.com and drunkdorks.com. And Leo, again, thank you for hanging out. Everything is out at bcbsm. Dot com, I believe. Yeah, and uh, if you actually want to know more about the IT, you know, area, then you you need to actually go to mibluetech.com. Mibluetech, okay. Mibluetech.com. Very cool. Yeah. Perfect. It's been a fun episode. Appreciate y'all for listening. One twenty one. We will Bob. see you next week for episode. No, no, 100. we will see everybody Thursday. No, Thursday. we'll see them in person. They will come. They will show Thursday. We'll or listen we will to us them. next week. They'll yeah. see us Thursday. This has been the IT and the D Show. Uh, appreciate it. Drink up your drinks. Get your phone numbers. You don't got to go home. You just got to get the hell out of here. <laughs> See you next week. Drive careful. Beat it. See it. The emergency destruct system is now activated. Conan, what is best in life? To crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and to hear the lamentation of your women. Long live Flash. You've saved your ass. Have a nice day. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass, and I'm all out of bubblegum.
Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. Make the run. The run. The run. Game over, man. It's game over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. I just, I can't say no, and I don't really want to, so. Well, especially with the back doors open. Yo, hold up. Time out. Time out. Y'all take a chill. You need to cool that shit out. And that's the double truth. Rue. Bob loves it in the camp. I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. Mm. That's why I like it in the can. Joe owns the cheese. Owns. 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 Bear me. <laughs> My job is to make sure this program is morally upright and cultural and wholesome. Shut up, Mimsy. Shut up, Mimsy. Shut up, Mimsy. Why would, like... Buick put their cars next to like the Bentleys. Like, why? That's not marketing. Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I can't take that position. That analogy yeah. sucks because it's right. Because you're getting your eight track tuned up. <laughs> Are we at a break yet? No! Yeah, so now I'm just like doing like stupid stuff to make me laugh. Venture capital is not the end game. When are we going to talk about me? Jane, you ignorant slut. It's my show. I can say what I want. Kiss my ass. (laughs) Go home. (laughs) Unplug. (laughs) Get off the goddamn internet. You are everything that is wrong with the internet right now. You're so white right now. I'm the whitest guy in the room. Just explain it to me. (laughs) Show now. I love this city. I was banging on the wang. Really? Should we talk about this? Tag team. Should I keep going or should I stop? Can I just say, it's been great being on a show that talks about Mickey Rooney dying for 20 seconds and then poops for 10 minutes. (laughs) (laughs) This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show.